Bowers and Wilkins sent me a pair of their new PX7 S2 Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphones. Here they are. Now in order to review these, I have to compare them to something, right? But I didn't really have anything new. And most people will want to know, I think, how they compare to the Sony WH-1000XM5. So I had to go out and buy a pair of those. So here these are. So today we're going to look at how the Sony compare to the Bowers and Wilkins. Now the sound quality differences between these two headphones, yeah, we're going straight into sound quality with side-by-side -side comparisons. The sound quality differences between these two headphones are, I would say, pretty stark in terms of audio and people yeah, assessing audio gear as I do. You know, I magnify the differences and then put them into context. I might do a bit of that later on. But when I play something like the Future Sound of London's debut album, Accelerator, I noticed that the Bowers and Wilkins, they go deeper into the bass. They come back from that sort of deep bass mining and they give us more punch in the low end. And if I play something from, say, the, those Mind Bomb, the original master, not the dreadful remaster from 2002, I do notice that the Bowers and Wilkins just have much better, and I've said this before, top to bottom clarity. By contrast, the Sony sound somewhat, and here's an audiophile cliche, somewhat veiled. They sound a little bit like that. And you wouldn't really pick it in isolation, but then when you cut over to the Bowers and Wilkins, you go, oh yeah, that's much clearer. I won't say it's crispy. That's just not a word that really factors into the Bowers and Wilkins sound signature. It does a little bit with the Sony in, maybe in the lower treble, but for me, the Bowers and Wilkins is not by far, but significantly better in terms of sound quality than the Sony, which I found quite surprising. Now, perhaps these differences are because the Bowers and Wilkins feature a four centimeter driver, whereas the Sony's driver is only three centimeters. Or perhaps it's because the Bowers and Wilkins driver is sort of angled in towards the ear. And I believe that driver is made from a biocellulose material. And yes, the Sony do come with an EQ in the app. So do the Bowers, we'll talk a bit more about that later on, but I wanna be very clear that no, we cannot EQ the Sony to sound more like the Bowers and Wilkins. We can't add, or we can't remove some of the, the Sony's opaqueness with its EQ. So strictly in terms of sound quality, I would say that the Sony XM5 is a good headphone. But I would also say that the Bowers & Wilkins PX7S2 is a great headphone, just in terms of sound quality. But here's the thing, I don't think that people buy on sound quality alone. In fact, I polled my YouTube audience, you people, on the community page and I asked you, putting sound quality aside, what's the most important factor for you when choosing a Bluetooth noise cancelling headphone. And by far and away, the number one choice was comfort. Before we get to comfort, I think we should talk a little bit about the carry cases that come inside the packaging. So this is the Sony from different sides. It's a nice carry case. The reason we have this now is because this XM5 Sony no longer folds up as the XM1 to 4 did. 
which is kind of a little bit annoying because I love being able to fold those up and actually just put them in a coat pocket. Can't do that with the XM5. Can't fold the Bowers and Wilkins either. This is their carry case, a bit more of a sort of classic look, a bit more conservative. I mean, the build of each of these cases is totally fine. And I guess they're gonna do the job. I don't really use them. I just kind of find, oh, I shouldn't do this, but I just put my headphones in my bag or just keep them around my neck or carry them in my hand. This isn't really for me, but it might be for you. Now feeding into the comfort factor of each headphone is its own build quality. The Sony is, it does look and feel pretty plasticky. It looks and feels, I think, a little bit cheap. And if it didn't sound quite so good, I might complain more about that. So you've got plastic here. The padding here is quite nice. The ear cups are very nice, very soft. I think this is vegan leather here. So it, yeah, it's just, I mean, they're well built. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's just that they just look a bit tacky compared to the Bowers and Wilkins. Now the Bowers and Wilkins for me look and feel like more of a luxury product than the Sony. I think it's important to note because I did make a video about the original PX7 a couple of years ago and the arms on that were made of carbon fiber. Here I believe they've gone back to plastic. Again, the ear cups are very nice, very soft, not quite as plush, I think, as the Sony. But yeah, the look and feel of this feels more like a gentleman's accessory than the Sony. The Bowers and Wilkins weigh 307-ish grams. The Sony are slightly lighter at 250. That does impact the, the comfort, the on-head wearing comfort. Does that make sense, the on-head wearing comfort? Anyway, the, the Bowers and Wilkins also have the much tighter side clamping force on the head. It does ease over time. I mean, I've had mine for about two months. They still clamp fairly, yeah, fairly robustly. Now that wouldn't bother me if I didn't wear glasses, but I do. Now the, the side force after about an hour can get a bit problematic with these glasses. With my clear frame glasses that have a thinner arm down the side, it's not so much of a problem. However, I definitely think that the Sony are the more comfortable headphone in the long term. And it's the one I pick up if I'm going out for several hours. I don't take the Bowers and Wilkins because obviously I need my glasses when I'm out in the street. So I take the Sony purely because of their better comfort factor. Let's pause a moment to talk about Codex because I think this is another important factor when people are buying active noise cancelling Bluetooth headphones. Now I think the codec conversation is far too loud. I think modern advanced Bluetooth codecs are very, very good indeed. They sound very close to the original because let's not forget that Bluetooth transmission in all but like one neuro earphone that I know of, it's all lossy. So Aptex, Aptex HD, Aptex Adaptive that we find inside the PX7S2, it's all lossy and it's only relevant to Android phones because we don't get any kind of Aptex in an iPhone. If we cut over to the, the Sony, there's no Aptex there. They got rid of it a couple of generations back. They instead specify their own LDAC codec. I can't tell you which one is better because I just think A, it will be like splitting hairs and obviously to go from LDAC to Aptex in this situation, I have to change headphones. And the hardware has a much bigger impact on sound quality than the codec in play. I tested both of these headphones using my Google Pixel 6, which obviously runs Android. I did that so I could get the best out of both of them. The iPhone obviously forces the connection over to AAC, which is in both of them. Did I notice a difference between using an iPhone and using an Android? Maybe, possibly but I, I just, it's too close to call with any sort of definitiveness. I couldn't say it for sure. However, where the Sony does step ahead of the Bowers and Wilkins is on Bluetooth connection stability. I had zero issues with the iPhone connections, but using the Google Pixel 6, sometimes when I put it in my jeans pocket, the Bowers and Wilkins would kind of give me dropouts and I'd have to pull the phone out of the pocket 
show it to the earphone like it's here and that would sort of restore the connection properly. It didn't happen often, but maybe like once a week. So enough to remark upon. Another important thing to consider is how we control playback, volume, noise cancelling on each headphone. Now on the PX7S2, it's all buttons. So on the left ear cup at the back, there's a button that allows us to cycle through transparency mode, noise cancelling, and then both off. And then on the right ear cup, there's buttons for play pause, volume up, volume down, and then turning the headphone on and off and Bluetooth pairing. And I must admit, I did find it a little bit fiddly if I wanted to pause the music as I stepped into a cafe, having to, like, do I have the right button here to push pause? Because sometimes I'd hit the, the volume up button by mistake. It is ribbed. The play pause button is ribbed, but it's not enough. Whereas with a Sony, it's got a touch sensitive right ear cup. So all I have to do is say like double tap and I get pause. And the other great thing about the Sony, and this has been with us since generation one of this product, is if we hold our hand on the right ear cup, even momentarily, it temporarily activates transparency mode. Fantastic. So for me, I think the Sony wins hands down in terms of haptics and being able to control the headphones just using your hands. There is a wear sensor mode for each headphone. And that means when you take them off your head and say put them around your neck, the music should automatically pause. And then when you put them back on your head, the music should automatically play again. The Sony was flawless in this respect. The Bowers and Wilkins, however, sometimes the music would just keep on playing and I could hear it when the headphones were around my neck. So in the end, I just turned it off in the app because I just kind of find that a little bit irritating when it doesn't work properly. But I've owned several generations of the PX series from Bowers and Wilkins, the Bluetooth things, and they've always seemed to be plagued by this minor niggle. It is a minor niggle. It's not a big problem, but I just, I remain very impressed by the Sony that it just works every single time, no exceptions. Now we come to the all important noise cancelling. Now, this is why I call Bluetooth headphones FutureFi. For me, they are the FutureFi of the headphone world. And they are analogous to streaming active loudspeakers because effectively they are streaming active headphones, right? There's a streamer, a Bluetooth streamer inside the ear cup. There's an amplifier which is tuned to the driver. So they're a bespoke fit, the DSP does some of that work, but the DSP also does the noise cancelling and the transparency mode and things like that. Super, super powerful. So in streaming active loudspeakers, we get the DSP doing room correction. In FutureFi headphones, in Bluetooth noise cancelling headphones, we get the DSP doing yeah, noise cancellation, EQ, transparency mode, all of the things that we kind of control with the app. But when it comes to just like standard, full-on engaged noise cancellation, if I compare the Sony to the Bowers and Wilkins, it's, it's complicated. So when I'm stood in the coffee shop queue waiting to order, I did take both headphones with me one day and then both headphones another day. And it was pretty close in terms of performance into, as to how much noise each headphone would block out. I think maybe the Bowers and Wilkins just have it by a nose in that they seem to obstruct more high frequency noise, more of the clatter of the sound of the cafe as sort of cups and saucers are being knocked about. However, when out in the street walking around, I would definitely peg the Sony as the better of the two in terms of noise cancelling. It just seems to be better at handling traffic noise and in many ways better at blocking sort of unexpected startling noises, right? It seems to kick in a bit faster than the Bowers does. But it's not a huge difference here. We're not talking night and day. The Sony doesn't blow the Bowers and Wilkins out of the water when it comes to noise cancelling. So if you're sat in an office all day, maybe the Bowers would be the better choice. But if you're out and about or if you're traveling a lot and you want to use a pair of noise cancelling headphones, say on a train, I would go with the Sony. 
Related to that is transparency mode. That's basically where you activate a setting that allows the external sounds to be captured by the headphone and then passed through to the ear. So it's as if you're listening without taking the headphones off. So it enables conversations and things like that. I think the Sony is slightly better here, but again, it's a super close call. And I, I certainly wouldn't want to stake my reputation on it. So I would just say either or in this case, they're both very good. But as I mentioned previously, the Sony's transparency mode is more easily accessible from you know, putting your hand the right ear cup. So I guess in, yeah, I guess maybe that from a functional point of view gives this sort of little standoff piece to the Sony. One thing that I don't think gets talked about enough is phone call quality with you know, full on you know, big headphones. I realize that when you're out in the street and you're having a phone call with a big pair of headphones on, you do look like a bit of a lunatic. I think it's acceptable now with AirPods. If people see you, you kind of, your mouth moving and you're talking and you've got AirPods in, they understand what's going on. But I think with big headphones, I think many of us have yet to make that connection and we go, oh, is this guy a weirdo? Or is he on a phone call? It's hard to tell, right? But I did take both of these headphones out into the streets and I phoned Jana in New York. And I didn't tell her which one I was using at any given time. And I went backwards and forwards between the Sony and the PX7 for a phone call over a period of about half an hour. I think we flipped over like four times. And every single time, Jana said she preferred the Sony. In fact, she said it was so good, she could barely tell that I was outside next to a busy road. Whereas with the Bowers and Wilkins, she said, look, I just can't really understand some of what you're saying because whatever's happening with the DSP, it's sort of truncating some of your words. Obviously indoors, it's much more of a close cut thing, but I don't know, I don't think I would ever use a pair of full size headphones to make phone calls indoors. No. Both of these headphones come with an app. The Bowers and Wilkins one is a little bit annoying because it forces you to log in first time to use it and the Sony doesn't. The Sony app is more advanced, it's more powerful. You can do more things, but it's also more cluttered. The, the visual aesthetics of the Bowers and Wilkins music app, it, it's a lot more beautiful. It, it just looks really nice. And it's also an app that I think Bowers and Wilkins are developing so that it can work with other Bowers and Wilkins products. So it's not just for those headphones. Whereas the Sony headphones app is, I believe, just for those headphones. Obviously both of them execute the firmware updates that come over the air every now and again. I think the Sony is a little bit more clunky in that regard, actually. So the app matters. So if you like a very nice looking, elegant app, you probably want the Bowers and Wilkins, even though the EQ settings are more basic than those found in the Sony, which yeah, looks a bit busy. And you're like, what is this? And yeah, it's, um, it's something I've learned to have to live with. I don't use them that often really, because if I want to activate noise cancellation, yes, I can do it in the app of either, but I tend to use the headphone itself to do that. Now I realize that some of you will want to know how these headphones compare to the Apple AirPods Max. And I don't think the Sony is really in the race here at all. I think the Bowers and Wilkins is, it's a bit closer to the Apple headphones. I still think these are some of the best active noise cancelling Bluetooth headphones available. But let's not forget that these sell for, in Europe, six, I think they're 649 euros. Whereas the Sony and the Bowers and Wilkins both self, I think for the same price, 419 euros. So the Apples are 50% more expensive. If you want the better sounding headphone, go with the Apple, definitely by far. But if you want the most comfortable headphone, it's not the Apple, it's the Sony. If you want the sort of happy compromise, it's the Bowers and Wilkins. So I think it's very, very hard to choose a winner between, I mean a winner, that means implies best, doesn't it? but a, a winner between the Sony and the Bowers and Wilkins that we're comparing here today. I find it very, very difficult because as I said at the start of the video, in terms of sound quality, it's Bowers all the way.
But the Sony does so many other things so well, especially the haptics, especially the comfort as a glasses wearer, that generally speaking, over the last few weeks, as I've been reviewing both of these headphones, I've picked up the Sony more frequently than the Bowers and Wilkins for those reasons, really. Just comfort factor, haptics, noise cancellation, even though they don't sound quite as good. And that's really the message of this video, is that when we choose to buy headphones or really any piece of equipment, it isn't just about sound quality. With speakers, it's looks. With headphones, it's looks even more so and comfort even more so because headphones are like audio clothing. We wear them. So when somebody asks me, John, should I get the Bowers & Wilkins PX7S2 or the Sony WH-1000XM5? The answer is it's complicated because yeah, if you want the best sound, Bowers & Wilkins, but you have to factor in all of the other features of the headphones in order to make a decision. I hope I've covered most of them today. What I love about these kinds of products is that the, they have come a long way in the last five years, really since 2016, when the first XM series of headphones from Sony came out. And I think wired headphone manufacturers should be really worried about what noise cancelling headphones can do now, not just because of their innate sound quality, but because they can cancel external noise. They bring the noise floor down so we can hear more of the music and at lower volumes. We don't need to crank noise cancelling headphones as hard, I don't think, and that's probably a good thing for hearing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very optimistic about the future, the future fine, the future of noise cancelling headphones. I think we've still got a long way to go, but I think there's some fantastic opportunities to be had from this particular product category. Bowers & Wilkins yesterday, at time of taping, announced the PX8. I think it's a slightly larger noise cancelling headphone. It's got a different driver. I think they've tweaked the microphone array. So maybe headphone call quality will be better on the PX8 than the PX7. It certainly needs to be in my book. So yeah, if phone call quality is important to you, you want the Sony. Anyway, I'm retreading old ground. I need to draw this video to a close. If you liked it, please give us a like down below. If you like my attitude towards, well, what's normally high-end audio, but today is about active noise cancelling headphones, Bluetooth, Bluetooth, right? If you like the fact that I cover Bluetooth products that the man in the street, every man would buy and use, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. I did deliberately miss purposefully miss hardwired listening. That for me is not a factor with Bluetooth noise cancelling headphones. So I'm not going to be covering that even if you ask about it. I'm very sorry. It could also be, no, don't need to worry about that. Now feeding in to the comfort of each head. Now the Sony are slightly lighter. No. And the hardware makes a much, what else was I going to say? Um,